Let us ready and prepare our hearts as we dive, dwell, and delve into the Word of God. By God's words, our hearts are touched, our minds are transformed, and our will are trained. The National Director of Free Mission Philippines Incorporation, Senior Pastor of Evangelical Free Church, Pastor Paul Hernandez. Hosanna in the highest, it simply means that in everything, in, in every pandemic, in every sickness, in every situation, in every status in life, in every scenario, in every experience that we have, Hosanna will always be above all of those things. It is above our problems, it is above our pressures, it is above our persecutions. It is above whatever experiences we have in our lives. That's why we sing, Hosanna. He is the merciful, the gracious God. Hosanna is always in the highest. He is above all things, far and above and beyond all things. Amen. As we start, let me just say hi to some of my friends here. Mga pastors na nandito. Sila Pastor Albert Pederipe. Sila Andre Magbanwa. Sila... Mga kaibigan natin sa ibang church, si Maja, sa mga uh, UFC, kila Kuya Yuri, kila Kuya Rico, kila Jeremiah. Maraming maraming salamat for tuning in sa kila sa Benjen, sila Catherine, kila Justine, sila sa UFC, sila Ate Perla, sila Ate Dada, and sila Ate Weng Agechi. Sa, of course, yung ating mga uh, free mission church sa Bohol, sila Pastor Reynaldo, sila Pastor uh, Paul na kasama natin dyan. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you for joining us for this wonderful night. And of course, yung mga pastoral staff natin, sila Pastor Raul, sila Pastor Robert, and uh, to, to all of you, I cannot mention all of your name once again, uh, pardon me, but, but let me just say hi, happy Friday to all of you, and happy Glory Night. Whenever we say Glory Night, it is the night of God's goodness. Alam natin, every day of our lives, the goodness of God is strong. Every day of our lives, the goodness of God is so powerful. But every Friday, we give emphasis on the goodness of God. We give emphasis on the love of God. That we want to hear nothing, no one but Jesus Christ and how good He is, how lovely He is, how powerful He is into our lives. So once again, happy glory night. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we honor you. Thank you. Continue to let your glory shine upon our lives and speak into our hearts. Speak to us, O God to each one of us and to each one of the viewers and listeners sa mga kanya-kanyang bahay. Maraming maraming salamat sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and Amen. But before that, let me just uh, invite you once again this coming Friday, uh, Monday, 7.30, Biblia at Politica. Nagkaroon na ng decision kanina. Of course, we might have different views on this. Uh, 17 no, 11 yes, and may mga nag-abstain. So the franchise of ABS-CBN has not been renewed. So we're going to talk about this, the pros and the cons, this coming Monday with Congressman Ronsalo, of course, and of course, Under Secretary for Human Rights Secretariat, si uh, Yusek Severo uh, Katura. So once again, thank you for, for uh, joining us. At uh, ang i-share ko po sa ating lahat ngayon is the extravagant God. He is not just good. Of course, we believe that He is good. He is not just gracious. He is not just generous. But His goodness, His generosity is extravagant. They are extravagant. The goodness of God are, supersedes our imagination. It supersedes our, our uh, thinking. It supersedes everything that we can even think or imagine of. Kaya kung babanggitin natin the extravagant God, His grace is amazing and it supersedes Every experience, all of the situations we are in. So once again, uh, as I just move on and continue on, can I just request each one of you to please write down your name? And also, can you write down where the church you are, uh, you are belong to and the place where you are located? Uh, Paul Hernandez, Free Mission Philippines, uh, GMA Cabide. Can you do that for me? Pakisulat nga dyan sa mga uh, comment section. And we know one of the most... And obvious attributes of God is He is gracious. His grace is so amazing. 
So the question is, is grace really the undeserved, unmerited, and unearned favor of God? In the point of view of man, yes, it is. We cannot merit, we cannot earn, we cannot deserve the grace of God. But if you would read the scripture, how about in the view of God? Is it really undeserving, unmerited, and unearned? In God's view, grace is something that He wants to show you every day of your life. He wants for you to experience every day of your life. That's His grace in your life. That's the majestic goodness of God in your life. In the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, if you would see, the Old Covenant, the relationship master and slave, di ba pinag-usapan natin kagabi? The facets, the three different facets of our identity. You know, in the Old Covenant, it's master and slave. But in the New Covenant, it's more of father and son in relationship. Of course, in, in the Gospel, we are still a servant but never a slave anymore because it is a, a doulos terminology, the jubilee. It is our own freedom, volition that we want to serve God. We want to worship Him more and more. So, sa old covenant, it is a master slave. Sa new covenant, father and son. Sa old covenant, God's mercy, it's the role. And in the new covenant, it's God's grace, it's rights. In other words, pag sinabing rights, yes, in human perspective, you don't deserve it. But in reality, in God's perspective, He wants you to enjoy His grace. He wants you to enjoy His goodness. He wants you to experience His beauty. He wants you to, to in, intimately know who He is in your life. That is the goodness of God in you. So, as we see, the old covenant is more of responsibility. The new covenant is more of relationship. Even though it's basically they, they work hand in hand, pero sa, sa old covenant, pag responsable ka, magiging maganda yung relationship mo. Ganyan yung difference. It's, it's, it's uh, backward. Eh. Pagdating sa new covenant, your relationship produces a wonderful responsibility. You become more responsible because you understand your relationship with Jesus Christ, with your God. That's the essence of the truth. So let me read Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 14 to 21. Oh, I want you to listen carefully uh, to this. Kung meron kayong mga kaibigan na pastor, mga, mga medyo nakakaranas ngayon ng, ng, of course, lahat tayo nakakaranas ng pandemic, yung mga nakakaranas ngayon ng financial uh, problem or, or pressures, you can still tag them. This is one of the favorite messages I really have and I believe this and I know as you receive this message, you will be blessed. And it will do wonderful things into your life. I challenge you, I, as I start reading this and continue to share this, I want you to open your heart, believe, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will experience breakthrough and you will experience tremendous outpouring of His blessing into your life. I want you to listen carefully. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. I will be reading the Passion Translation and later on, I sing it, sing it ako ng The Mirror. Uh, translation. Okay, let me read it from the Passion Translation. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14, and the following verses. So, I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every Father and child in heaven and on the earth. So, He is our Father. He is the Messiah, the Savior. At ang sabi dito sa verse 16, And I pray that He would unveil within you the unlimited riches. Can you put there in, 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 doon sa comment section, unlimited riches? I claim it, unlimited riches. Pag sinabi natin unlimited riches, we're not just talking about of money. But of course, money is part of it. We are talking here of God's unlimited provision. You cannot Measure God's riches. Kaya sabi dito, He would unveil within you. Hindi, in, hindi, ano, hindi to you. Within you. He will unveil. He will reveal in your heart. He will reveal in, reveal in your spirit. Within you. The unlimited riches of His glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with His divine might and explosive Power. I want you to see that. Unlimited riches, supernatural strength, innermost being, 
divine might, explosive power. Imagine those terminologies, right? So let me read verse 17. Ang sabi dito, Then by constantly using your faith, guys, we are being challenged to use our faith, to believe Him more and more. Whether you actually, whether you believe God or not, He loves you. Whether you believe God or not, He, 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 he will never leave you nor forsake you. But whenever you exert and believe Him, something happens in the inside of you. Something happens in your spirit and you see the manifestation of who He is into your life. Kaya ang sabi dito, and the resting place of His love, the resting place, sabi yan, oh let me just read it again and then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you. So the life of Christ will be released deep inside you. Amen. And the resting place of His love will become the very source and root of your life. The resting place of His love. His love which is so amazing. His love which is, which is so marvelous. His love which is so powerful. The resting place of His love will be the source and root of your life. Life. I love that. Right? So, so verses 18 and 19. Then, you will be empowered. So, when the resting place will become the source and root of your life, which is His love, yung pag-ibig niya, mamaya babasahin ko yan sa mirror translation. But let me just continue reading. Ha? Sabi dito, Then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences. The great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. Amen? Na mararanasan daw natin yung pag-ibig, yung kamanghamangha, kagulat-gulat na pag-ibig ng ni Kristo sa lahat ng aspeto. So, hindi lang sa iyong emosyon, kundi sa iyong physical, kundi sa iyong Imo, uh, uh, men, mental sa yung uh, sa lahat ng aspeto that you will experience in all its dimension how deeply intimate and far-reaching is His love ang sabi dyan. how enduring and inclusive it is endless love beyond measurement God's love is endless and it is beyond measurement. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. Something that even your mind will never and can never comprehend. This extravagant love pours into you. So yung extravagant love that God who is so extravagant his extravagant love is, is poured into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Di ba normally, for example, itong, itong uh, tasa, pag nilalagyan ng water, pag malapit lang ba puno, ititigil na kasi matatapon. Pero ang description ng pagpo-pour out ng Panginoon ng pag-ibig sa atin ay hindi ganun. Ang sabi dito, ibubuhos ang pag-ibig sa iyo hanggang ito ay mapuno at kahit puno na, hindi pa rin ititigil ang sabi doon until it overflows. You are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Let me read verse 20. Never doubt God's mighty power. Never doubt. Thou shall not doubt. In other words, Diba? Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. I want you to put that in the comment section. Never doubt God's mighty power. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. Now, while I am, I'm reading this, I want you to just say Amen. A gesture of believing and claiming. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will undo them all for His miracle, miraculous power constantly 
energizes you. Now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church in every generation through Jesus Christ and all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Amen. Let me read verse 17 in uh, verse 19 in, in the Passion Translation. And sabi dito, I desire for you to become intimately acquainted with the love of Christ on the deepest possible level. On the side of the Apostle Paul is for you to intimately acquainted with the love of Christ on the deepest possible level. Far beyond the reach of a mere academic intellectual grasp. So, hindi lang yung, yung academic or intellectual knowledge. Within the scope of this equation, God finds the ultimate expression of their image and likeness in you. I share it in the church too, but let me just give another emphasis on the things that I have about the share. Number one, number one, God achieves, we rest. God achieves, we rest. He's the one who works. He's the one who finishes. He's the one who did it. He's the one who who manifests. He's the one who fought. He is the one who did everything, what you only need to do is to rest. In other words, is to believe what He has achieved for you. He's the one who fought for you in behalf of you. He is the one who took away all our sins. He is the one who has made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He is the one who achieves. We are the one who rest and believe. So God achieves, we rest. Sabi dito sa verse 20, sabi dyan, He will achieve infinitely. He will achieve infinitely. Something that is not measurable. His achievement is something that is bigger than you. His achievement is something that is a lot bigger brighter and better than our capacity to think and imagine. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. Ang sabi dito, more than your greatest request nor your most unbelievable dream. Kung tatanungin kita ngayon, ano ba yung mga greatest request mo? Ano ba yung mga unbelievable dreams? Diba? May mga iniisip tayo, diba? Huwag ka masyadong mangarap ng hindi naman uh, pwede. Oo, may tinatawag talagang impossible or in wishful thinking. But there are visions that God has given into our hearts and into our lives that we can imagine, believe God. Unbelievable dream. Yung mga unbelievable and greatest request ka, sabi niya, He will achieve. And He has achieved. Eh, lalo na. Yung mga believable. Naniniwala ako kung kaya mong isipin Pwede mangyari. Walang imposible sa ating Diyos. Amen? I just love it. Ephesians is, the book of Ephesians, in, the, in, in this particular chapter that we read, is, is just so powerful. He will achieve more than, greater than your greatest dream and your most unbelievable, unbelievable dream or greatest request. Kaya nga yung sinabi niya, it is finished, di ba? We are free from sin consciousness na hindi ka naman pagpapalain eh kasi makasalanan ka. So, freedom from situation-centeredness. At tignan mo yung situation mo. Ayan ba yung bless? Naniniwala ka pagpapalain ka? Tignan mo yung nangyayari sa buhay mo. Eh ano ba? Yung freedom from self-consecuta. Tignan mo yung sarili mo. And I want you to understand, God is a lot bigger than your consciousness. God is a lot bigger than sin, than situation. And He is a lot bigger than yourself. Sabi sa mirror translation ng verse 20, We celebrate God, Elohim, who supercharges us powerfully from within. So, the strength that God is giving us is from within. It does not come from the outside. Now, one of the greatest mistakes of many leaders and pastors, like me, I experienced this. Sometimes we taught our strength are taken and given by someone outside of us. Saan? Sa kaibigan natin? Saan? Sa, 
sa trabaho natin, sa kumpanya natin, saan? Sa mga ginagawa natin. And we thought that we get strength from the outside. Pero ang sabi dito, we celebrate, we rejoice in God who supercharges us, who gives us strength powerfully from within. Your strength is not taken outside of you. Your strength is taken from the inside of you because it is given within you. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, God told them, I've never quit loving you and never will expect love, love, and more love. He, ex he, he achieves it for you because He loves you. Alam mo kaya gusto ng Panginoon malusog ka because He loves you. Kaya tinutugon ng Panginoon ang prayers natin because He loves you. Kaya tayo ay, ay pinuprovide mga pangangailangan natin because He loves you. My needs are provided because God loves me. Healing is mine because loves me. Favors and and graves are ours because He loves us. That's the truth. He achieves, we believe, we rest. Pag sinabi, alam nyo sa scripture, let me just define glory night naman ngayon. Pwede naman siguro ako mag-end ng mga 8.35 hanggang 8.40. So bagay pag live mo yan, hanggang 9 tayo eh. Pero pag, pag, pag online, hindi dapat ganun kahaba. Okay? Pero let me just put it this way. The word rest is not, it's not not doing anything. Pag sinabi nating rest, hindi ito yung tambay. Pag sinabi nating rest, hindi ito yung nakahiga. Pag sinabi nating R-E-S-T in the scripture, hindi ito yung walang ginagawa tapos nakanga parang si Juan Tamad. Hinihintay na lang, pwede namang kunin na yung prutas, hinihintay pang bumaksak. Sobrang tamad naman talaga ng kwentong yun. Tawan-tawa ko yung bata ko rin. Sabi ni Yusuf ko, kalo ko totoo eh. Sobrang naman yung kwentong yan. Pwede namang abutin, tapos hinihintay pang malaglag. Tsaka ang idea kasi noon, pag nalaglag yun, di ba? Ibig sabihin, sira na yun. So, <laughs> bulok na yun. So, ganito, ganyan. Pero the point is this. When we say rest, it's not that we're not doing anything. Rest in the scripture is not not doing something. Rest in the scripture is relying in the love and power of God into our lives. Meaning, we are resting on who He is. Pag sinabi niya, Naniniwala tayo gagawin niya. We are not struggling whether we, He will do it or not because we believe in our hearts what He said He will do. That's what we call rest. Uulitin ko, the misconception sa mga a grace proponent, finish work proponent, rest is not doing nothing. Rest is not struggling that God will fulfill what He has promised, that God will provide what He has said, that God will heal the people He said He will heal. I will not struggle. You will not struggle. It will happen. That's what we call rest. Kaya, number one principle, He achieves, we rest. We do not struggle. We believe it. We claim, we receive it. Amen. Number two, God exceeds, we received. Yung una, He achieves and we rest. Pangalawa, God exceeds and we receive. Ito ang, ito ang good news eh. This is the gospel. Yung ina-expect mo, yung answer ni Lord more than. Amen? Yung inaasahan mo, yung answer ni Lord, bigger. Yung idea ng ng o ibibigay ni Lord dyan, naniniwala ka, di ba? Naniniwala ka. God will provide your tuition fee. God will provide uh, your need, yung kailangan mo bukas, pambili ng ganito. Naniniwala kang ibibigay. Pero ito si Lord. He is not a God of enough. He is a God of more than enough. You believe Him, He achieves. You believe, you rest. Then when He gives it, then you receive it, then it is more than what you have believed. Amen? Naalala nyo, pinaka gusto ko dito yung laging, nakikwento ko tayo si Zacchaeus, di ba? Sabi niya, he heard that Jesus was coming, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10, 
and he wanted to see Jesus. I want you to see his desire. He wanted to see Jesus. Kung makita sa Sikimor 3, wag na natin pag-usapan yung, yung kung gano ka, ka significant yung Sikimor 3, ha? pero it's a picture of the cross. Then, nandun siya sa taas, gusto niyang makita si Jesus. Ang desire ng heart niya, makita si Jesus. Ha? Makita lang. Then, yung nandun siya sa puno, Jesus was walking, sabi ni Jesus Christ, Sokeus, tinawag yung pangalan niya. Pambihira, kung ikaw yung nandun, sikat na sikat si Jesus Christ, di ba? Yung mga tao, nagkakagulo, pag nandun si Jesus, bilang tatawagan yung pangalan mo. Matindi yun, bilang tatawagan, di ba? Ramil, sa libu-libong taong nandito. Uh, Pinky, bilang tatawagan, no? Buboy, Aren, tatawagan sa sobrang dami ng tao. Pero ang expectation niya, ang desire niya makita lang si Jesus Christ. Tinawag yung pangalan niya, tapos bumaba siya, sabay silang naglakad, tapos sabay silang naglalakad with all the people looking at them. It was more than what he desires. It was more than what he wanted. It is more than what he expected. Then naman tindi ron, yung naglalakad sila, syempre, mag-iiwalay na, ini-expect niya, sinabay lang siya. Tapos bila pang sinabi ni Jesus Christ, kay Zacchaeus, ay, kain ako sa bahay niyo, pambihira. Kaya naggulat yung mga tao. So, iwanan na natin yun. But let me just emphasize this thing. It is more than what Zacchaeus expected. God achieves, we rest, we believe. And then when we rest and believe what He has done, what He has finished, He even exceeds our expectation. We receive, and what we receive is beyond our deed. Amen? Ang sabi dito, di ba, as we have read kanina, He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. Whatever, however wild your imagination is. Meaning pa sinabing wild, parang hindi na makatotohanan. God exceed, He exceeds your wildest imagination. Amen? He exceeds and we receive. Di ba ang sabi nga sa Psalm 25 verse 14, TPT translation, There's a private place reserved for the lovers of God where they sit near Him and receive the revelation secrets of His promises. There is a special position for you when God speaks to your heart, receives and reveals, and you receive His revelation secrets. Amen. Yung word na hooper, na binanggit din sa, Ma- sa Romans chapter 5 verse 17, di ba? And uh, sa chapter 6. The word hooper, ayun yung kinuha na word na exceed. Exceed. It's hooper. Ang ibig sabihin yan, extend benefit that reaches beyond the present situation. So it's not just the present provision. It reaches beyond the present situation. Na yung blessing mo na hinihingi pang ngayon lang, pero ibibigay ni Lord pang isang taon. Yung hinihingi mong blessing pang ngayon lang, pero ibibigay ni Lord pang isang buwan. It reaches beyond the present situation. Amen. Guys, but let's distinguish that this is not wishful thinking. I'm not a prosperity gospel. I simply believe gospel is prosperous. But I don't go for prosperity gospel na pag may sakit ka, pinarurusahan ka ni Lord, pag nagkasala ka, uh, hindi ka na papayaman ni Lord. No, I, I don't go for prosperity gospel. But I believe in the gospel, there will always be prosperity. Amen. The word hoper means expresses comparing benefit for the sake of betterment. Meaning, He provides for the sake of betterment. Improvement, extending benefit. Meaning, when God provides, kasi minsan, minsan yung provision, di ba? especially pag hindi mo pa kayang i-handle yung, yung, yung wealth, instead na makatulong, nangyayari, hindi eh. Pero yung, 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 yung provision ni Lord, it 
is for the betterment of our lives, the betterment of our ministry, the betterment of our family. Whenever God provides, it will always be the betterment. Sometimes His provision is not even money. Sometimes His provision is a particular uh, friend na ang akala mo. Ang akala mo, hindi naman yun yung hinihingi mo. Pero, ayun pala yung magpapaalala sa'yo na mali na yung nilalakaran mo. Minsan yung, yung provision ni Lord sa'yo, ang, ang hinihingi mo ay particular na bagay. Binigay sa'yo mentor. Binigay sa'yo pastor. Yun pala, yun yung mag sa challenge sa iyo that you can do it pag pag nilagay ka na pala agad ni Lord doon sa gusto niyang ikalagay sa iyo madi-discourage ka pa so ang unang nilagay niya sa iyo is a mentor to tell you that you can do it by the grace of God that yung nandun ka na sa situation when you face problem then you have a mentor and tell you you can do it then you go on ang provision ni Lord reaches beyond the present situation amen it reaches beyond our present situation. Let me let me read Matthew 28 verses 18 to, to 20. Basahin ko na lang yung verse 18. Now, now go in my authority and make disciples of all nations by touching them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you. And never forget that I am with you every day. Never forget that I am with you. Every day. God is with you every day. God is with me every day. You know, these past few days, I was so... I was thinking a lot. And it's just so tough. It was so tough and rough. Believe me. I don't, I, I don't want to, to, to share a bit of what it is. But it, it, it's so tough. It is so rough. But it never came out of my mind how good God is. He always reminds me of how He loves me. And that's one of the things I want you to be reminded tonight. God achieves and exceeds you rest and you receive because He loves you. Amen. And let me go to number three as we, we, we finish this message. God, God outdoes we reign. Maganda yun, no? He basically achieved. We believe that, we rest. Then we receive. Then when we receive what He has promised, it is beyond our expectation. He exceeds that. Pero bukas, He will outdoes it. Oh, he will outdo it. Meaning, kung ano yung meron ka ngayon, bukas, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Yung binigay ni Lord sa'yo ngayon, mas maganda yung hinahanda niya sa'yo bukas. Amen? God outdoes we reign. Ang sabi dito, never doubt God's mighty power. Let me just go on along sa verse. He will outdo them all. Yung wildest imagination mo, yung unbelievable dream na meron ka, yung greatest request na ang tagal ng nalaman ng heart mo, ang sabi dito, He will outdo them all. For His miraculous power constantly energizes you. It constantly energizes you. Sabi di ba sa Romans 5.17, that once held us in its grip, and by the blunder of one man and reign as a king over humanity, that reign. But now, how much more are we held in the grip of grace? We are held in the grip. You are not holding grace. It is grace holding you. Walang ma-open dito sa sasabihin ko, ha? Pero yung idea kasi na kapit lang. Kapit lang kay Lord. Tama naman yun, I'm not saying it's wrong. Pero gusto kong ipalala sa'yo ngayong gabi, minsan, dadating sa time na kahit kumapit, hindi mo na kaya. Pero kahit dumating yon, yung pagkapit sa'yo ng Diyos, hindi pa rin mawawala. 
Amen. Sometimes, because you don't have the strength anymore, frustrations, disappointments, problems, you cannot grip on God anymore. You cannot even grip on grace anymore. But the grip of His grace will continue reigning in your life. Amen. Amen. Enjoying our regal freedom through the gift of perfect righteousness, the one and only Jesus Christ. Jesus is not only my provider, He is my provision. Amen. He's not just my provider, but He is my provision. Four months, guys, four months of pandemic. Four months of quarantine, four months of ECQ, GCQ, MGCQ, MEZQ. Right now, binuksan na. Dito sa amin, hindi pa rin kasi tumataas yung, yung, yung cases. Pero sa Manila, sa ibang mga provinces, binuksan na. Pwede nang lumabas kahit hindi pa rin talaga nasosolve yung pandemic. For what reason? Because it's already safe. No, because our economy is dying. It's hard to, to, to say na, are we still going to be successful? My answer is, yes. Because, not because you can hold on, but because God is holding you. Because God is holding you. Remember this. He achieves, we rest. He exceeds, we receive. And He outdoes, we reign in life. Amen. Sabi sa Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, let me end with this particular, or three, two or three passages. Through the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines. Pag nilagay natin ito sa Tagalog, kahit wala na akong makitang pruta sa mga puno, kahit wala nang laman yung refrigerator ko, Though the labor of olive may fail, kahit wala na akong makitang trabaho, and the fields yet yield no food, wala na akong pambili ng pagkain. Though the flock may be cut off from the pole, wala na akong pambili sa palengke, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will join the God of my salvation, but I can still be having joy. Because my salvation does not come from those things I mentioned. My salvation comes from God. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my pit like dirt pit. And He will make me walk on my high hills. Amen. Sabi sa Acts 17.28 For in Him we live and move. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand this. We need to be hardworking, I understand that. We need to do the best that we can in every arena we are in. Trabaho, negosyo, lahat, ministry, lahat. Give the best of who you are. But always remember this. For in Him we live. In Him we moved. And in Him we have our being. Amen. Sa Kanya nang gagaling ang buhay, kaya tayo nakakagalaw dahil sa Kanya, at kaya tayo nandito dahil sa Kanya. In Him, we live, we move, and have our being. Sabi sa Passion Translation, It is through Him that we live and function and have our identity. Ganda ng Passion Translation, no? Sabi, It is through Him that we live and function and have our identity. Amen. It's just majestic. Heavenly Father, we honor you, we thank you. Thank you for speaking into our hearts and lives. I don't know the situations of the listeners and the viewers tonight, Lord, but one thing I know, you know every situation that we have. I pray, Heavenly Father, Believe that you are continuously, consistently, constantly achieving as we rest in you. You are consistently, constantly, continually, Heavenly Father, exceeding 
as we received and you outdoes all of those things as we reign in this life. Thank you, Lord, because even though there are times that we cannot, we don't have the strength to have the grief, your grace never let us go. The grip of your grace is what sustains us. You are our salvation and you are our strength. We honor you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Amen. So, yung mga gusto magbigay ng tithes and opening, may BPI dyan, may BDO, may GCash. At, you can just send it. At, uh, sa mga hindi natin members, pero mga kaibigan natin, you can always extend the blessing God is giving you. Four months of pandemic, four months of challenges, four months of pressures, inside, outside the ministry, but the grip of His grace has never changed. And the thing is, He will never, ever let us go. Amen. Pagpalain tayo lahat ni Lord. Once again, happy and blessed evening. Happy and blessed glory night to all of us. God bless you. And I'm out.